It's time for another lesson from Math Pace Algebra 1101. I want to look at pages 29 through 31 and uh, do two problems on the board that are similar, not, a, not identical, but similar to ones that you have um, there in your pace. Okay? <clears throat> so let's just kind of talk our way through a couple of these and maybe in the process of talking about it it'll uh, begin to make a little more sense. So whenever we're adding fractions, like let me just make up two fractions, two thirds plus one fifth, in order to add those I would need to get a common denominator, right? So you'd say, oh the common denominator is 15 so to get the 15, you'd multiply 5 times 3, which means we take this numerator times the same 3. This one's 3 times 5, so I take 2 times 5 and get 10, okay? Once we have the same denominator, then we can add. So we have to do something very similar to elementary fractions when we're adding here. But notice my two denominators are x and y, okay? Now this is a protected quantity, it's like x plus y in parentheses, and here it's x plus y in parentheses. So the common denominator is going to be x, y. Alright? Well this term right here to get x, y is missing something. It's missing the y. Okay, everybody see why? So we have to multiply top and bottom by y. So y times x is x, y y times the quantity x plus y, okay? And we can just leave it like that for now. Then this one is missing the x. So I have to multiply by x top and bottom. So plus x times x plus y. All right. Now, can we distribute that out? I'm trying to think if that's uh, going to be helpful. Let's wait on that for a minute and see if we need to distribute that out. We're going to do something similar down here. Um, this, I think, was supposed to be an x. All right. We're going to make it an x. All right. So this one, similarly, to get the denominator of x, y, is missing y. So y times x plus y minus, this one's missing x top and bottom, so x times x plus y. All right. So I multiply top and bottom by x here to get the common denominator. This one, top and bottom by y. It's kind of sloppy, but that's x plus y. All right. Now, um, I'm looking at this and thinking, would they do that? They might do that. I don't have the score key for this to see what they actually do in the score key. There's a couple things we could do at this point. We could multiply this out, you know, and get x, y, plus y squared, plus x squared, plus x, y, okay? But I'm thinking that's not going to help us as much as if I recognize that right here, this is like a common factor, okay? So look at this term and look at this term. And notice that x plus y is a common factor. So if I factored that out, x plus y, what would I be left with? y plus x. Okay? So they've got, it's kind of like um, distributive property here. If I took the y times x plus y, and then the x times x plus y, but this, fact, this term here is the same as that. Same thing happens down here. I have x plus y, x plus y. So if I factor that out, I'm left with y minus x. Now, <clears throat> watch what happens. I'm going to go over here and then we'll erase it when I set up, set up this problem to do it. So I'm going to write the x plus y y plus x over xy, 
Okay, so that's this, which I've simplified over this. Now notice, this is a big line here. This means I'm dividing by this whole denominator. So I simplified this to be this, and x plus y times y minus x all over xy. Now when we have a big fraction divided by a fraction, do you remember how we solve that? We're gonna take the numerator and we divide by the denominator, which means we multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so we take this denominator, we have to flip it upside down, that's what the reciprocal means, and then we multiply, okay? And we did that back in elementary school and junior high with fractions. When you're dividing by a fraction, you flip the second one and multiply. So I'm gonna bring this up here and have xy times x plus y times y minus x. All right, now here's where the magic happens. All right, so watch, I'm gonna erase this because that is this now. X cancels X, Y cancels Y, and then I have an X plus Y here, which cancels X plus Y here. This X plus Y is not the same thing as this. This is Y minus X. So that's a different term. And I can't cancel the Y against the Y or the X against the X. These are considered um, protected quantities, all right, because we have a plus in the middle there. So I can't just willy-nilly cancel. I can only cancel when things are being multiplied. So it's like this is being multiplied times this, times x, times y, down here, x, times y, times this, times this. So any factor that appears on the top and the bottom will cancel each other out. It actually becomes one, all right? Anything divided by itself is one, so it's like I'm multiplying by one. All right, <clears throat> so we um, just did for you a problem similar, that was kind of a long one, similar to one that you're gonna have in your homework, but uh, a little bit different, so I'll let you tackle that one in your homework. Now, let's, let's see what happens with this one. What would be the common denominator? Let's just focus on the denominator here. What would be the common denominator? How about M, N, okay? So what do I have to multiply times M to get M, N? Do I hear an N? Okay, so N, top and bottom. So this will become N plus, this one needs an M, top and bottom, so plus M all over mn. Now this whole thing is m plus n, okay? <clears throat> I could write this, well, stay with me here, I could write that as m plus n over one. The reason I sometimes like to do that is just so that my head, my brain recognizes that, oh yeah, this is like a numerator and the one is the denominator and then I'm dividing by this big quantity here, okay? So we, remember, dividing by a fraction, we can turn it around, flip it up here, and multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm gonna multiply times m n over n plus m. All right, so now that I did that, I can erase this because that's the same thing. I was dividing by that, now multiplying by the reciprocal. I like to put this in parentheses just so I recognize that, okay, these are protected quantities. I can't cancel the M against the M or the N against the N. Is there anything that cancels out here? So I'm looking at this and it's the M plus N. Is that, is that the same as N plus M? It kind of looks the same. And then we remember the commutative property says that if we have two things we're adding, we can change the order, and it does not change the answer, okay? Now we can't do that for subtraction, we can't do that for division, but addition, sure enough, we can do that. So M plus N is the same factor as N plus M. So that cancels out, and we just end up with MN. Isn't that easy? Amen! Get it? Amen. All right, forget it. So again, this is not 
one of the problems from your homework, but very similar. And uh, hopefully that will help you again with, with the numerator, with the denominator, try to get a common denominator and simplify it. And then your last step, take the numerator and multiply it by the reciprocal of that big denominator. And something should cancel out, all right? Um, but be looking for that and hopefully you do well. As you head into the next section, it actually is a little bit easier because you are taking complicated expressions and they give you the values of the variables. So then it's just a matter of plugging in numbers and sometimes it's easier actually working with the numbers and solving. All right, so I think the next few pages you should be fine, but this was kind of a challenging lesson that I wanted to give you some help on.